Do you know what's a really cool narrative? Rookie junglers. There have been a lot of them propping up in the NALCS and a few here and there around the world. And in particular, there are two teams that have currently won their best of threes with only a change primarily in the roster in the rookie jungler. Now, I'm talking about North America's Cloud9 and LPL's IMEI. More or less from their world championship roster have kept the same starting five except for the jungler. Of course, in Cloud9's case, we have Ray starting for a couple games, but more or less the roster is the same except that they have contracts for Medios and I'm a very similar situation. They have Ben4 that they've been using in place of Voidless who has gone to another team. It looks really exciting to see these guys succeed. I mean, I'm is Ben4, got a quadra kill in his very first series around Baron. You have contracts looking to be kind of aggressive, diving past towers, all these other situations that look really cool and were immediately drawn to these kinds of flashy plays and we want to see these guys do really well. But the question is, are these junglers themselves really just opening the map for these teams? Are they making them that much better or is there something else going on here? The first thing we want to look at is obviously the problems that were inherent in IMA and Cloud9 and why they might want to change their junglers. If you look at the way that Cloud9 played, my primary criticism of them was that they were very much about sticking to lane and very isolationist and i think a lot of that had to do with how they interacted with their jungler there was very little grouping up or moving with the jungle from either mid lane or the support position to go to other lanes and have an impact on the map in some way as a result you had these really stagnant kind of laning phases where jensen would just go off but then he would stay in lane and there wasn't a lot of roaming there wasn't a lot of pressure exerted on the jungle there wasn't very much of anything shared across the map, and they just felt really disjointed as a team. This is a big reason why I think no lane swaps helped them, because they could just exert their super good 1v1 prowess and then win the game that way, but when they got to the international stage, teams like Samsung, who had really strong mid-game rotations, ended up doing much better than Cloud9, and they had a lot of issues with closing out even in the group stage. May, on the other hand, had absolutely the opposite problem. Instead of just sticking to lanes, they probably gave up possible lane advantages too much to group and move across the map, maybe have top, jungle, and mid, go bottom, dive, all these sorts of things, and if these plays didn't pay off, it was really easy to fall behind, especially for a jungler, so a lot of what made a void list look good as a jungler were things that kind of made up for the fact that he was constantly playing from behind. These things included setting up wards in particular locations, having earlier back timing so that they could buy a certain item and avoid a jungle invade. But this isn't necessarily what you want in your star jungler, right? You don't want a jungler who just kind of avoids falling behind too much, right? You want a jungler who doesn't fall behind as much, who is good with working in, with his lanes to get an advantage instead of the other way around. Question is, are contracts in Ben 4 really what these teams need? I think because of the way these teams play and how they're so completely different, comparing them will actually give us a pretty good idea of what these new jungle additions are actually doing for them. For example, in the case of Aimei, we had a lot of instances where Ben 4 would just meet up with Road or amazing J and they would put pressure on mid together. It was almost always the case where they would be securing scuttle first, M4 would be invading the jungle with someone else and then from there they would use that pressure to gank mid and have a lot of instances like that. There are even very specific instances where it seemed like Ben4 was coordinating his back timings very precisely with road. So they would go back by vision, go to the jungle and secure some of Ben Forest camps and then push out with wards to do an invade together. Or there would be an instance where Ben Four would go and he would invade topside and he would activate vision plants and then him and Amazing J would meet up through that vision created and go ahead and gank mid for Athena. These types of situations were really interesting because they featured a lot of- it put a lot of emphasis for Aimei on river control and getting that scuttle and then moving from there to the lanes. So it made sure that you had advantage and you had vision before you made a gank happen or made a play happen. And it was a very team-based jungle style. So you give a lot of credit to 
I may as a unit that's already existing to facilitate Ben 4. Of course, Ben 4 seemed really proactive. He was making a lot of things happen. And a big part of that was that he got strong jungle matchups in basically every game. I would say that there's only one game that they lost, and that happened to be the game where he didn't have a strong jungle matchup, right? Because they were always prioritizing Kha'Zix and Lee Sin. And when they did lose, he was playing Rek'Sai into Aimee's Kha'Zix. And there was a very specific instance where he was even bullied out of the river because he was playing this Rek'Sai into the Kha'Zix. And it was just a very simple 1v1, and you could see the matchup illustrated. So I think that had a big emphasis was the fact that they were putting a lot of weight on having the strong jungle matchup for Ben 4 in this case. And I made themselves, the press conference said that, yeah, we feel like he's a bit more aggressive, and so we wanted to play to that. Cloud9, by contrast, I feel hasn't looked the same way. They don't necessarily meet up in River as a unit. It feels a lot more like it's a lot of weight on contracts to sort of do things. And because of that, there are things that Cloud9 are missing. For example, both Dignitas and Team Solo Mid, I felt, put more emphasis on securing the mid-jungle matchup in terms of just gameplay. I felt like, in general, Cloud9 drafted a stronger mid-jungle matchup, but that Dignitas were able to try to get advantages or have lane presence in mid more often. In every single game, the enemy jungler had presence in mid or showed up in mid beforehand, before contracts did for Cloud9. And so this kind of delayed the strength that Jensen could have had on the lane, and it also set up abilities for the mid laner to maybe and it also prevented him from maybe making as many plays with contracts as you would expect. There was maybe one or two instances in all five games where Jensen actually did a roam in the early game with contracts, and that was mostly just to go into the, the jungle and secure a red buff. It was not really like the situation with Aimee at all, and when you did see Scuttle secured, it was almost entirely with Contracts himself, or it was from the bottom lane doing things, and then when Contracts got those really cool highlight ganks, a lot of that was the lanes were pushed on their own, and they were getting the kill, and he came for the cleanup. So I felt a lot like there's still a lot of discombobulation and a lot of disjointed play in Cloud9. Similarly to Aimee, they almost always had the Kha'Zix pick, and when they lost, the one time they lost, they picked Lee Sin into Cossacks, right? That was the one game that they lost to Dignitas. So I think that there's a very similar situation where C9 are setting up contracts to have a strong jungle matchup basically every game. I've tiptoed a little bit around it, but there is a definite elephant in the room here. And that elephant in the room is going to be the fact that Cloud9 and IMA outdrafted their opponents to an almost embarrassing extent every single game this week. For example, when we talk about the very first draft between Aime and Royal Never Give Up, you had a situation where Varus and Tom Kench against Caitlyn and Nautilus in the bottom lane. It's a very Varus-Tom Kench favored lane. You had a mid lane, which was Cassiopeia and Rise. That's a favored lane. You have, as I already suggested, the Kha'Zix into Lee Sin, Kha'Zix favored. So really the only matchup that RNG put a lot of weird emphasis on because they wanted to do this weird flex draft thing was Kled, okay? That was literally, the top lane was literally the only lane that should have won. And get Cloud9's drafts, you have a very similar story with the very first game of the split where Team Solo mid, they have Maokai against Shen, all right? Shen is going to win that matchup typically. You have Ash and Misfortune into Zyra and Callista. Typically, after a certain point, Misfortune and Ash are going to push that lane really hard. You have Fizz and Syndra after a certain amount of levels. Again, Fizz should be able to punish Syndra pretty hard and basically across the board, and we already covered the fact that it was Kha'Zix for contracts against Rek'Sai, so it's like literally every matchup there, I felt like Cloud9 was winning. And Team Solo Mid were trying to get to a point where it could just team fight, which isn't necessarily ideal when you're talking about how a jungle operates in an early game, because when you talk about the early game, it's really easy for a jungler to look good if all of your lanes are winning, because if all of your lanes are winning and all of your lanes are pushed out, then you can just invade and do stuff on your own, and it's 
the troubling thing about Cloud9 in particular is that they weren't using these lane advantages to make plays together. So if you're having contracts do stuff on his own, even with lane advantages, it's much easier for him to get caught in situations where you don't necessarily have these lane advantages. And to me, this speaks more deeply to Cloud9 still being a disconnected team. Similarly, for Aime, if you're having all of these winning lane matchups, it's a lot easier to roam together and group up and make plays together. I feel like this is a slightly better style because they secured you know, jungle vision, and they set up the play before actually executing the play, which I felt like was missing in a lot of the way Cloud9 was doing things. But Aime don't have the best players. I don't know how to put this in a, in a nice way, is that historically Aime's individual players have been weak. And this is something they even say as a team, right? They are very open about, we feel individually, our players are bad. You know, we think that if it were down to individual play, we'd be a maybe top eight team just out of relegation zone. But they play better together as a unit and so when they're losing lanes which eventually i'm hoping lpl teams and other nalcs teams will figure out how to not like losing matchups early in every single lane there will be situations where these junglers will have to make a decision that's making a trade on one side of the map for another the fact that the only games they lost were games where it wasn't straightforward definitive almost every lane is a winning matchup and our jungle matchup is strong is a little troubling for both Aimee and Cloud9, and I think that this is something that we need to look at, because when you're talking about rookie junglers, they rely a lot on their team and coordination with their team, and if their team isn't able to get advantages for them to make things a lot easier for them, I think it's when rookie junglers will start to not look as strong or not stand out as much as their more experienced or veteran counterparts. So it's a really cool storyline to see these rookie jungler substitutions taking these teams to the tops of their league, but first of all, the leagues have had a lot of changes to them that make both LPL and North America look kind of like a mess right now. Really disconnected, uh, lack of team cohesion, a lot of weird roster moves that make some old teams look better than they were, and things like this. Second of all, it's just when it seems like you're that much ahead in laning phase, the jungler's job is really straightforward. and. Within that context, I don't think there was anything in particular that Ben4 or Contracts did that made them stand out super well or look extremely smart or intelligent or individualistic. So that's my take on the Rookie Jungler from Manamanan. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out more stuff at Yahoo Esports, in particular my content on League of Legends.